You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Your Business with Faith. Do you find yourself struggling with your business due to self-doubt, lack of confidence, and without a support team? Christian life coach Gina Sanasardo is here to help. Gina will allow faith to spread throughout your life, including your business. So now, please welcome the host of Your Business with Faith, Gina Sanasardo. Hey everybody, this is your host Gina and you're listening to Your Business with Faith and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Uh, so glad you're here with us. Um, have an exciting show planned. I uh, really do want to help you guys instill confidence and understand that you do have a trusting support system here for you, for all you business owners and people that are just in the workforce too and uh, looking for different career paths or trying to really figure out what your calling and vocation is. So Last week, we spent a lot of time talking about how faith uh, plays out in so many different areas of your business, whether it's something that you do um, as an employee versus being a business owner, um, maybe, you know, thinking about different type of callings or vocations that you do that you don't necessarily get paid for because they're more of a passion, um, any sort of job or career that you have, really seeing how faith can uh, take a lead in that. And uh, I had kind of previewed a little bit about the... Uh, the three H's, happiness, holiness, and being healthy, um, how that affects you in so many areas. And we're going to definitely tackle that area in your business world too, because it's all about being authentic and genuine and how you show up in your work, in your everyday life, um, and really being able to find joy and passion out of what you do. And a little bit about your call to worship is just doing it well and giving glory to God while you're doing it, regardless of what it is that you do or your status. So it's important that we emphasize that. Um, in fact, I just gave a presentation to my staff about the passion and calling and how to uh, give ourselves a little bit of a break. Sometimes we're hard on ourselves and to be gentle and take time to rest in God's presence and uh, remember what it looks like to have that call of worship and how we all do it and don't even realize we do. Um, so one of the things that's so important is learning about the three H's, as I call them, happy, holy, healthy. Um, and we talk about being happy, not so much because everything's going great at the time, but rather because you could see the good in everything that's occurring. You know, you've probably heard the quote, you know, it's okay to want things, but also um, want the things that you have to, you know, be appreciative. And we've talked so many times about gratitude and a lot of it's just about our mindset and perception. So I want to welcome you into sitting down and kind of sinking into that idea of what those three H's all are all about, what they look like. It's really a great concept in general for families, personal, a lot of personal levels. Teenagers can apply this and definitely, you know, anyone in the workforce, you know, to have this life consisting of these three concepts can really be key to a fulfilling life. You know, when we explore how we feel about these ideas and how the thoughts behind them drive us in all the directions that we desire at work, home, our personal life, we can really end up with that desired outcome you want. And so we kind of have to sit down and think, well, what does happiness really look like to you? What is that desired outcome that I want? What is it? You know, so we could define it as, well, maybe it's success. Maybe it's collaboration, teamwork. Uh, maybe it's kind of being recognized or acknowledged for the work that you do, what you do. Maybe it's on a more personal level. Maybe you want to feel purposeful or have fulfillment. So you really have to define what that looks like to you in your workplace. Um, what kind of thoughts occur to you when you experience success? 
you know, do you just feel excitement or joy? Is it more a sense of pride, accomplishment? Does it kind of give you a hunger to want more? Do you want to spread that and help others kind of empower themselves so that they could reach their fullest potential and help them thrive in their work too? You know, that's what a lot of good leaders do. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about high quality leadership and what that means is not that I lead the way per se, but I lead others into allowing them to grow into leadership as well. So we all have our own unique idea of what happiness is to us and how we experience success. You know, that's unique as well. Uh, we don't need to judge it either way as bad or good. It, it just kind of is. It is what it is, neither positive nor negative. Um, I, I often say, you know, that happiness is one thing. It's kind of like a, a current condition, whereas joyfulness has more longevity to it because we have that long lasting delight or satisfaction or contentment. And obviously I talk about joy and peace interchangeably a lot and how that's for us. That's why my practice is uh, peace, joy in you, because that's meant for us. We're meant to share in that. So this is a quote I had actually uh, talked about last week. It's happiness is letting go of what you think your life is supposed to look like and celebrating everything that it is. So when we think about those three H's, happiness being the first one that we're kind of focusing on right now, it's kind of that longevity, that futuristic idea of, well, it's not just right here in the moment. And although that's important too, you know, we want to think about how joy is more long lasting, how it's really able to give us that feeling of purpose, direction. It allows us to really assess our values, our core uh, priorities. Um, again, we talked about this before, about how important it is to be happy and work because we feel like we're valuing our belief systems and that we're integritous and that we're focused. So, you know, really understanding, well, what makes you happy in the workplace? You know, I mean, it's obvious that we can spend time talking about what that looks like at home, maybe even on a personal level, but it's okay. And we have the right to want happiness when we work in our career, not just on a monetary level, but in a personal, professional sense, too, you know, I'm happy because I know what I'm doing is important. I'm happy because I know I'm impacting people. You know, I have joy in what I do because I get to work with these great, amazing, talented people that also inspire me. And I know I'm helping them be their personal best. So really defining what happiness looks like in work. So this is, I know we spent a lot of time talking about this in our last show about what it means to be holy. And we talked about how so many people think, well, to be holy means that, you know, you're bored, you're not doing anything and your whole life is full of sacrifice and compromise. And we said this really quite contrary to the truth. You know, holiness is living in the truth of being consecrated, which means we're called to that holiness. We're special, we're sacred, we're reserved, you know, we're all unique. We're all made for a certain purpose and passion. And it's all about being able to follow that plan, which is, uh, again, nothing new. You haven't heard me say before. So we want to make sure that we value that goodness, that we follow it and we allow ourselves to be led by that goodness and checking in with what I call a moral compass, right? So, you know, asking yourself, like, am I being integritous? Am I the one that's meeting my measures, my values? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? You know, am I being honest? Am I giving credit? Am I sharing ideas? Am I helping people be their best? Or am I kind of hoarding the success for myself? Is it about cutting corners and the path of least resistance? So it's really important that we take time to really focus on what that's all about. Um, again, to be holy doesn't mean you have to be standing somewhere and passing out flyers about God and what it means to be holy. And, you know, that might work for some, but to be holy really means to just be our original selves that God designed us to be and living that out the way he wants us to. You know, this is what we've been talking about since day one. So it's really this holiness is this honored gift that we have from God. And it's really just because he loves us. We didn't have to do anything to deserve it. In fact, there's nothing we could do to deserve it. But it's rather to live and savor life in every moment that we have, right? Sees every God-given opportunity as a chance to show up how you want to live and show that who that you really are and how you want to be. So the way that you do things, the way that you respond, right, will show others what your values are and how you desire to live in accordance with them. So what this is all saying is that to be grateful, kind of putting everything in a nutshell, right? Everything we've been talking about, to be grateful, 
to live our lives to the fullest, to know what our talents and our gifts are, to live on that path, to totally trust and surrender ourselves to God, to love him even in the trying times, to surrender, right? To help other people be their best. That's our call to holiness. That's our form of worship, which turns us into happy, joyful beings. So the, everything is all related. You know, we talk all the time about it. It's like a holistic approach, right? Work affects home, which just affects your personal life. Personal life affects your home, your family. It, we're all intertwined. We might wear a gazillion hats throughout the day, but we're still one person, one being, one soul, one plan, one purpose, one path. Okay, so I don't want to ever get anything confused about that. You're always the same person, same heart, same values. So we're going to keep talking about this and digging in a little bit deeper. Stay with us. I'm your host, Gina, on your business with faith. And we're live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hi, everybody. This is your host, Gina, and you're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you are listening to Your Business with Faith. Thanks for coming back, everybody. Right now, we're talking about how in work, we can live our call to holiness and worship, and we don't have to do anything other than be our true, authentic selves, because the way we show up is our holiness, right then and there, in a nutshell. And so I kind of want to just go back a little bit, if you're just joining us, about how I wanted to talk about the three H's, happiness, holiness, and being healthy, and how they're all intertwined with who we are at home, in our personal life, our family, and of course in the workforce, because everything we do has an intertwining ripple effect on one another. Um, so we were talking about, you know, being happy is kind of in the moment, and so we aim to look for a happiness that brings us more of a, a long-lasting joy, right? Like working with great people and appreciating what we do, having that sense of gratitude, no matter what it is that we do, knowing that we're integritous, we have values, we're honoring them and, you know, feeling fulfilled and passionate about what we do, knowing we serve a purpose, living the plan that God made for us because we're all made so unique. And so we just started talking a little bit about what it means to be holy and how people have this stigma on holiness as being boring. And all I do is pray all day and I float around on a cloud playing the harp. Like I've heard people say stuff like that. It's comical to me. Um, and so really holiness is all about just showing up as our truest self, right? And being joyful and being kind to people, honoring our values and stepping back. And as I say, checking our moral compass, checking to see where we are, you know, Hey, am I being honest? You know, am I being kind to people? Am I being crabby with them or short with them? And of course, we're all human and we all have those days when maybe you're tired, or stressed out and you are a little bit on the crabby side and that's fine because the reciprocal to that, 
when you're at work is then extending that mercy and tolerance to other people when they have a bad day and not being judgmental on them. Like, oh, that person's horrible and gossiping behind their back, but rather being tolerant to like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? You seem kind of stressed out or can I help you with something? You don't seem to be acting like your normal self or do you need a break? You know, can I do something? Can I help you out? You know, just human kindness, right? Human decency, being there for each other. And that's really what we think about when we talk about holiness, um, you know, and, but at the same time, I do want to emphasize, there's nothing wrong with sharing your faith too. You know, again, I'm not asking anyone or suggesting rather that anyone, uh, you know, proclaim from the rooftop that, you know, if they don't do it God's way, then that's it, you know, and I don't know that that's necessarily what God wants either for us to be overly pushy and um, to ever be overly assertive in that sense where we would actually push people away, but rather show who he is through the gentleness of ourselves, through our kindness, our actions, the way we speak, what we avoid not to talk about, not to look at, and not to engage in can actually say a lot about a person. So, you know, we talk about how God originally meant for all of us to be happy, to laugh, to talk, to be with our friends, but to also, again, like I said, have that compassion inside for others and share in other people's triumphs and sorrows. So that means that when someone does have a success, celebrating it with them, right? There's nothing better than that. I love when I work with people and they have that aha moment and it's like success. It's like an epiphany. I'm happy for them. I'm sharing it with them. And it's it's a, a joy I get to experience on my own too. I'm able to share in that with them, you know, and maybe it's someone that you're not particularly fond of. So at least, you know, you know, we think about sportsmanship, we can have that in work, right? Have good work ethics and congratulate them and not say something behind their back or go to the extent of assuming they did something to manipulate the system or this is horrible. That's not good for you. And that's definitely you know, going to um, further that gap from you and God. And and then it gets to the other age, the healthy age, which we'll talk about in a minute. But, you know, I, I hate to uh, water it down, but be nice, right? That golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. You know, Jesus always says, love others as the Father has loved you. So what does holiness really mean to you? You know, I mean, I, I'm here to kind of challenge your perceptions about what that means, um, you know, there's a, of course I have scripture here, Hebrew 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So follow peace with all men and holiness, right? Without which no man shall see the Lord. So you are called to holiness, right? To have that peace and peace with other people. Yes, definitely peace with God. We want things to be right with him but peace with other people. Sometimes we don't get to choose who we work with, right? So we have to try our hardest to be kind to those people, whether it's a client who may not be totally committed, not allowing themselves to be accountable, um, someone that we work for that's not nice to us, someone that we work with that doesn't necessarily appreciate what you do or feel the weight that you're putting in. You know, we all have those moments in our life. If we haven't, we have at one point and you have not yet, I assure you, you will. Um, so just because you're a business owner doesn't mean that you don't understand what that's like. We've all hit the, you know, the groundwork of working our way up the ladder and uh, have colleagues sometimes that maybe, you know, we feel like are cutting the corners or don't see eye to eye with them at least. Um, but seeing things in a new light. So, you know, any of you out there that are thinking about this and maybe do feel challenged as to what holiness really means now, how does it feel to maybe see this in a new light? It's like, gosh, like maybe I am really a holy person. And I didn't even realize it. So many times, you know, when we talked about this in our last show, people think I'm not worthy of it or I'm not good. I'm too much of a sinner. I make too many mistakes. And that's great. You know what? We're all human. We all do it. In our humanness, we, we're flawed. We err. What's beautiful about our faith with God is that at any given moment, we could start over, right? And the call of holiness is always there. There's a reserve. We can always tap into it, you know, recognize and be accountable for what we've done, you know, and then let's, let's start over. Let's start fresh with the grace of God. Let's get that holiness kind of ingrained back into our lives. Um, what's interesting is to think about how other people view holiness and how sometimes that can get in the way of how you want to live. You know, are you called a goody two shoes or all oh, that person's perfect or people make comments. What's sad is that people make comments regardless. So at least try to live a life that's honoring you where, you know, at the end of the day, Hey, you know what? I lived my life the way I wanted to. I'm happy because of it. And I feel healthy. 
there's that other H. So stay with us because we're going to talk about that too. This is your host, Gina. You've been listening live to the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, and this is Your Business with Faith. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Hi, everybody. This is your host, Gina, and you're listening to Your Business with Faith, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thanks for being with us. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are talking about the three H's, happiness, holiness, and health. Um, and some of you might be thinking, wow, what does all that mean? Uh, so what we're talking about is how we can not only just live at home and with our family and our personal life, but even at work, really have a sense of happiness and joy in what we do because it's that fulfillment and passion, but also have a, a holy attitude about it too. And what that really means is just to show up in ourselves, to have a value system that we honor, to feel good about it. But I was asking a question at the last segment about how sometimes other people's views of holiness can get in the way of how we want to live because we're worried about being judged because of the way we act, like we're goody goodies or maybe people think, oh, well, little Miss Perfect or whatnot. People have all sorts of comments to make. It doesn't really matter these days what you're doing. If you're doing it right or wrong, people want to make comments. So I was saying, at least at the end of the day, you can know, you know what? I have values. I live up to them. I have integrity. I'm decent. I'm a person of my word. I honor how I feel and that makes me happy. And, you know, essentially that's healthy for me too. And we're going to talk about what those three H's really mean because there's different ways or words you could use to explain it that I think a lot of people understand too. So, you know, most people for themselves and their love, you know, they want for themselves and for others. They want everyone to be healthy. They want everyone to be happy and they want them to be holy. And so a lot of people think, well, I don't necessarily care if someone's holy or not. And what they really means is, well, I just want you to be a good person. I want you to be a decent person, someone that's nice, someone I can count on. I mean, that counts for so much. And it it says so much about who you are and your character and the way people think of you, which I guess in theory, if you want to look at it in a certain way, could advance your career because people know you're trustworthy and they know you're committed and loyal and they're going to want to work with you. And we've talked about that. Like when you think about attracting clients – when you're able to really be yourself and be the best person you could be and you're tapping into that passion and purpose that you're going to attract people to come to you because you're being holy. So back then when we had our show and we talked about that, we didn't call it being holy, but that's what it is. It's your call to worship, your call to uh, worship. So again, it doesn't mean that you're self-righteous. I want to make sure we really emphasize that. It doesn't mean that you're perfect or you think you're better than anyone else. It just means that you're acknowledging, hey, I'm a child of God and I care about others. I care about myself. I want to be honest. I just want to be a good person for crying out loud. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
right? We think about our kids. We want our kids to be happy. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be good people, right? We want them to be holy. So really, it just means that we're graced by God to live righteously, which means to live right, to be moral, to have a moral standing, to be decent, to be good. So how might living in that alignment of virtues benefit you in your workplace? You know, we just discussed about how it can help you attract clients. You know, uh, people are going to want to work with you. People are going to refer you. I mean, I have to admit, someone I worked with a while ago said something really nice on Alignable, actually, which is another social media network um, about me. Um, I was so touched. Um, He had said that I was one of the most humble people he had ever worked with as far as a business coach. And I couldn't believe that he said that. He's he's a great guy. I love him. Um, And I was really touched that he had said that about me. So when you show up as your true self and you're honest with who you are, and you're kind of an open book <laughs> for people to see, you know, the integrity, then people are going to want to refer you. People are going to want to help you. They'll go out of your way to help you. They're going to request your help. You know, hey, can you do this for me? Or can you do that for me? Or I recommend you to do this. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons also I was asked to even be on the show because of the type of affiliations I had, the type of posts or blogs or articles I had been involved with. Um, So it's amazing when we show up as who we're really supposed to be and are good, decent people, it helps us in our career, right? Or if you're in a position where you're working under someone, they might want to help promote you and help you reach your fullest potential as well. And obviously, you'll have it within you to help others do the same, to help others be leaders, to be the best they could be. So uh, with that, um, those are just a few ways that living in these virtues could benefit your life and in the workforce, especially. Um, So you might sit and think like, well, gosh, you know, what areas can I maybe, I don't want to say change, but maybe what areas can I improve on or how can I view it differently at work? Like I said, so many of us live this calling to worship and holiness. We just don't even realize it. So you might sit and reflect a little bit later on and kind of assess like, well, I'm always honest. You know, I always give due credit. I always help people out when they need it. I'm kind, you know, these are all things. And you might think they're small and trivial and petty, but my gosh, they're not. They add up. The littlest of things can change other people's lives. And that is your call to holiness, your worship. You're all doing it. So, you know, you got to think, How interested are you really in living this life in a way that reflects who you are as a holy person and not worry about what other people are thinking, right? Um, Here's another quote here. (laughs) You know how I love my quotes. It's not happiness that makes us grateful. It is gratefulness that makes us happy. So when we appreciate what it is that we do, what others do for us, and we see the holiness in others too, we see their happiness shine out. We see they're living a healthy life it kind of inspires us too. And then we work to empower each other. Now, God knows that we're human, right? We talked about that. He knows we're not perfect. We also know that he didn't come or die for the righteous alone, but for the forgiveness of sins, who he says, right? For forgiveness of our humanity, for our everyday flaws that we have. But he loves us. He loves our efforts towards him and knows our heart's intentions. He knows what we're really thinking. So let's say you really do have a good intention at work or for a client or to refer someone and it didn't pan out the way you thought, and maybe someone misjudged you. Thank God he knows your intention and what you're really thinking and what your heart is. He sees that holiness. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day, right? Because success isn't measured just monetarily. It's measured, like we said, how we feel. That happiness, the health, and the feeling of holiness that we have. So when someone thinks about being healthy, There's many aspects to consider. There's the emotional health, physical, spiritual, cultural, relationship. (sighs) There's a lot. (laughs) So what does being healthy really look like for you? You know, which are most important? What areas do you think you need to work on? What areas do you think you're actually really mastering? So imagine, if you will, how you could bring those gifts that you are applying to these areas of success to the areas you want to improve. So let's say that socially you're pretty healthy. You've got a great range of friends. You've got great relationships at work. You know, people respect you. They care about you. What about it is working well in that area that you could bring to an area that's maybe not working so well? You know, maybe you're not the greatest at giving credit to those that need it. Maybe you're so busy, which is totally normal because we have crazy schedules 
that you don't offer time to see how other people are doing or how you could help. You know, how maybe can you shift the success of your social friendship dynamics at work into helping others? So I'm going to let you chew on that for a little bit because we're going to talk about this more because this is a really big part of it too. So you're listening to Your Business with Faith. I am your host, Gina, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Hi, everybody. This is your host, Gina, and you're listening to Your Business with Faith. And we're live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So we were talking about how you can kind of self-assess and see how happiness, health, and holiness come into your work. Um, So for those of you that are just joining us, we are looking at different dynamics in our work environment, whether we're the business owner, we're the CEO, you know, we're an employee, or we're working with other colleagues or affiliates or different associations and how we can bring certain elements to where we live in our profession, our career. So we know all these things filter through from home to work to personal to family. But right now we're really focusing on how that looks in the workforce and uh, having that happiness, that purpose and passion, which allowing ourselves to show up who we are really shows that we have integrity and honesty and commitment to be our best. And so that leads us into that third area of what it really means to be healthy. Um, So we were talking about how we can kind of streamline areas that work really well for us into other areas that we want to look at. Um, so maybe we were talking about the different types of health. Actually, we have emotional, physical, social, spiritual, whatnot. Um, you know, we might have this great, we were saying social, uh, dynamic at work where we're friendly with everybody, but at the same time, maybe we're not always there to see how other people are doing. So even though it might be a social aspect, that's great relationship wise, you know, maybe we, that's something we need to work on a little bit. Um, you know, maybe emotionally at work, we're not healthy because we're so stressed about certain things, or maybe we're just like really obsessive compulsive about things and things have to be a certain way. And we happen to make other people feel bad if they don't do it the way we think it's supposed to be done. Right. That's not necessarily healthy for us or anyone else. We want to have an open mindset. Um, and then we think about the physical health when we think about just our stress and what it is that we're doing. Are we eating right? Are we taking time to breathe and to rest? And so the kind of way it all rolls into each other. So uh, one of the things I want you to think about is what kind of thoughts do you have to foster a healthy attitude, right? This mindset that we have going into things. So we kind of use, I just use the example of people that want things a certain way, you know, type A, OC, whatever you want to call them. Um, we've all known them. We've all worked with them that if it's not a certain way, then, well, you're just not good enough, or I don't want to work with you, or 
I'm just going to do it my way anyway, because I don't really care what you have to say and your input and feedback means nothing. And uh, it's just not okay. It's not a healthy attitude. We want to be open to what other people have to say, open to new ideas, ways, strategies, or methods, whether we're the boss or we're not, or we're working with a team, right? Especially if we're coaches out there, we know that won't fly for sure because it's all about our client's agenda. Um, But some business coaches too, though, it's one of those things where you got to be really careful treading on that uh, thin ice there about the way we want to foster that self-discovery process with our clients, right? Not our way is the only way or making someone feel bad if they're not doing it a certain way. That's not fostering a healthy attitude. So again, when you think about being healthy, you might consider being fine or making choices that are in alignment with what's best or beneficial to you and your well-being. So what kind of actions do you take to stay healthy, Right. Again, we talked about like even managing stress. So you could get stressed because you're working with people they don't feel are honest or are cutting corners or are not being kind or are not being nice to you. Or you could feel that stress actually, if you're the person that's not being kind or honest or honoring your values, you'll have that inner conflict or inner turmoil and that really does affect your health. So you got to think about what your actions are doing and how they're serving you because they will catch up to you. Even mentally, you could start to feel anxious or depressed, sleep deprived, second guessing yourself, doubtful fear. None of that is healthy, right? So we want to have a healthy attitude, a healthy approach and a healthy atmosphere to which we're working. And I mean, we can even think about our actual work, physical conditions. Is it too cold? Is it too hot? Is it enough light? You know, obviously that would make common sense. We want to make sure that's something that we're considering and assessing as well. But these three paradigms are a great way to look at where you are and where you want to be with things at work. These elements are a way for you to set goals and achieve them. So does, I say, my air quotes, X, Y, Z really make me happy? Do I feel that I can mean a sense of holiness when I act like this? Does doing this support my health? (laughs) Does this make me happy? Um, So these are just things to think about, you know, any particular situation or circumstance. And sometimes just this alone might be a red flag for you. Like, wow, like I never thought of that before. You know, am I happy? Do I feel fulfilled? Do I feel like I'm being a good person? How is this serving me? Do I feel like this is healthy for me? A lot of people at the end of the day can come home and say, I don't think this is healthy for me. Like working 10 hour days, like that's not okay. We we talk a lot before about work-life balance. And that's one of the things I like to help people with is how can you say no to things? How can you find rest? How can you sit and do nothing and not feel guilty or idle or unproductive and know your body just needs to restore? You need to rest, right? And let everything process that's going on. You know, people that are working 70 plus hours a week, it's crazy. They're like on call 24 seven and I'm not talking about ER doctors or anything like that. I'm talking about people in the business world that are just on demand or on social media that is important to your work, but you got to have that life work balance. And it's a skill to be learned. It's a habit to be acquired. And I know some people that master it, they can. And then I know some people that are just swamped, you know, so if you find it hard to think of something that satisfies all three of these areas, you know, that's normal. It's normal to think, well, it's never going to be perfect. I'm never always going to be happy. I'm not always going to be a perfect, holy person. And I may not always be in a healthy condition. You're right. Let's get realistic. You know, but if in general, you could say for the most part, you feel pretty good about those three uh, dynamics, then you should feel really content with where you're at. You should actually feel more content, more than content rather. But it's okay if not all three are in perfect alignment or are always constantly present in your everyday workplace because you're going to get mad about things. You're going to be tired. You're going to be crabby. You know, sometimes you're just going to be exhausted. You're not going to be feeling well. And that's perfectly fine, right? That's our humanity. That's life. Um, So think about what might be holding you back from wanting to assess what's going on in your work world. You know, why might certain things be holding you back? You know, and then how do you feel about that? What kind of goals can you achieve to maybe work through that? Where do you want to go with that? So it's really important to ask yourself, like, how is this serving you? You know, does it align with my values? Who I want to be? Is it healthy for me? Is it okay for me? I like this quote, too. It says, today I trust, trust myself. 
and do not look to others to tell me I'm good enough or acceptable. I give that to myself. And again, I think that's so important that we make healthy choices all the time. This is so important important that we care about ourselves enough to make sure that we're doing okay with that. So this is your host, Gina. You've been listening to Your Business with Faith. We've been live on the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio. Please stay tuned with us. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is your host, Gina. We're live on the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to Your Business with Faith. Uh, We've been talking about the three H's, happiness, holiness, and being healthy, and we talked about how, kind of a recap here, about how happiness is really all about that longevity. Like, I feel joy, content. I feel peace in what I'm doing, my purpose. I'm impacting others. And then we talked or defined holiness rather is really just showing up as who we are, being our authentic selves, being honest, having values, honoring them, living up to a certain set of standards and beliefs that we have for ourselves and assessing our priorities and really defining what's important. And we talked about just bottom line, being a good, decent person and recognizing and acknowledging that we're called to this holiness and we're called to this worship and that we all do it and we don't even realize it. Sometimes we think it's got to be something grand or crazy, and it's not. And it's not about shouting from the mountaintops about God and handing out flyers about God. It's it's about who we are. It's about being nice to people and helping people, sometimes going out of our way or empowering them, helping them strive to be the best, kind of like what a good leader would do. We're all called to be leaders, too, to lead people, right? Think about it. That's what we do as Christians. We lead people, essentially, to God. So helping them, supporting them, and being there for them. Uh, we're going to talk about evangelization and just a pinch and what that really means. Um, but just in our actions and in our deeds and the way we talk to people, what we choose to do or what not to do, what we choose to be a part of and what we choose not to engage in. Um, and then we talked about health and having a healthy attitude and really looking to seeing what works for us and what doesn't. Uh, sometimes the way we are and our stubbornness isn't always good for ourselves, for each other, managing our stress levels, looking at that life work balance, asking ourselves, like, is this serving me? Is this working? You know, you kind of have to say, like, you know, how how is this equating here? What's what's really going on? Um, defining that happiness and success isn't always monetary, but that it's a profit often that's more in a form of pride and purpose and joy and impact. So that's really important that we remember that. So 
it is something to think about. It's a challenge. It definitely calls for a lot of self-reflection when you think about these three H's in our life and in our work. You know, really anything is within your reach when you believe that you can do something or to change or look at things differently. Your life is precious and valuable. So you got to be patient with yourself, right? Because you're loved deeply and you're designed to live in abundance so that peace and joy can be yours. We talk about this all the time. Uh, You know, you hear me say that a lot with my coaching. It's just it's so important that we allow ourselves time to rest. I've actually had shows on this um, and would love to have um, someone. I actually have a health coach that I'd love to have come on here and talk about that too and how faith in her life helped her redefine what health looked like. And now that's her work. That's her passion. So there's like a zillion wonderful health coaches out there too. They can't emphasize it enough that health is now need to be seen in the work world too, because we get so much stress from work and the pressures and the anxieties. And sometimes it's external and a lot of it's internal, right? So just really having a balance, being able to budget all three of them um, and really look at those dynamics and see how it all kind of plays out. So, you know, we ca- talked a lot about the call to worship and what it really looks like. Um, and we talked about those three H's of happiness, holiness, and health. And how do we fit that into our busy schedule, right? Because a lot of times we think, well, I don't want to have people judging me because I'm trying to be a good person. And so again, to recap, we said, People make their comments all the time. You might as well feel good, which is a a sense of being healthy and happy and holy by being true to yourself. And at the end of the day saying, hey, you know what? I'm a good person. That's really all that matters. I'm trying to do right by everybody. And so really, I said I was going to define for you what it means to evangelize. It's all about our actions, right? Here people say actions speak louder than words. You know, it's not to be self-righteous, but just to be righteous, to be good people. You know, and what does God want us to do? He wants us to be mindful of other people, right? Sometimes we're so busy in our work schedule that we're in our own little world and we're in our own little whirlwind, if you will, of stress and schedules and busyness that we don't mean to neglect or not see other people. We just don't get the chance to get around to them. And that's not good. That's not healthy. And that kind of deprives us of a certain sense of happiness and holiness. So we are called to help other people. We are called to that holiness, not that we have to kill ourselves in the process of it, but sometimes it's good to get out of ourselves and see what's going on. Um, And really, you know, be glad in his name and rejoice. Be excited for what you do. Love what you do. Find that passion. It doesn't matter what you do. We've said it. Have passion about it. That's your call to worship. So there's so many people that have our checklist and say, I'm just too busy. I don't have time. I can't worry about that. We all say it. We all do it. But there is a way we, t- we kind of infused gratitude a little bit in here, right? Like appreciate the subtleties, like what I'm doing, the wonderful people you work with. Look at the deep impacts you're making. Even if it's something small, recognize that what you're doing is holiness, that it's something that really internally can cause you much joy and happiness and essentially makes you healthy because you're making healthy decisions. I mean, we could get into the physiological components and look at the anatomy of everything with our brain and endorphins and different hormones and chemicals released, but I don't need to do that. I think we all know well enough that when we sit in our true selves and are honoring ourselves, that's (laughs) definitely a component to make us healthy. So really, just be you. Be the you you were meant to be. I have another quote. I love it. One of the greatest challenges in life is just being yourself, right? In the world that's trying to make you like everyone else. And we all have these pressures, these expectations we feel we have to meet, especially at work, right? And so we got to learn how to sift through all that and assess what's working and what is it because you are called to greatness. You're already great. Think about it, right? What's important to you? Your values, your beliefs, your ethics, what matters most to you? It's all right there inside of you. So tap into that greatness, tap into that holiness, allow yourself to feel happy and joyful. Allow yourself to be healthy. It is time to take a stand. It is time to understand that even in work, we are allowed certain rights. 
which are to feel good about what we do, to feel healthy about it, to be integritous, to show up as ourselves. They have joy and the impact and the purpose that we have and not worry about what other people are thinking. You can always pray for them. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to stay tuned with us. We're going to close out and just talk about a couple more things. I have a little bit more scripture. I'd like to just run by you real quick. I am your host, Gina. We're live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. And you've been listening to your business with faith. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hi, everybody. This is your host, Gina, and you're listening to Your Business with Faith, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So I just want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, This has just been a a great show, I feel, that we're talking about these three H's, the three dynamics, what we all want for ourselves and others, maybe more for others, but forget about doing it for ourselves, happiness, holiness, and health, and how we can infuse it into the work world. Um, And really, it's quite simple. You know, the, the formula is simple. Be kind, be compassionate, be generous with others, like with your time, be generous with your talents, be energy, I'm sorry, be generous rather with your energy, with your effort, with your talents, your money, your love, your mercy, your tolerance. Be generous, right, with your holiness, with your happiness, and with your health for yourself, too. Got to be generous with ourselves, too, for that. So I have uh, Psalm 100 here, which is kind of like a call to worship, I guess I'd like to read it. It says, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God and he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. This is my favorite. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I love that last one. This is the day the Lord has made. I mean, that's something. Can you imagine if every day before we get into work, step into our car, step into the office, get on the phone with a client, go to a meeting, whatever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Everything is going to stem from that. We're going to be happy feeling that way. We're going to have called into our holiness. and We're going to be healthier because of it. You know, live how you think. You've heard us talk a lot about the law of attraction, right? It's a good day to have a great day, right? Have a great day. Live in that rejoice of God. Wake up knowing that you can, that you can help others with your time, your support, your encouragement. Yes, all the small acts of kindness that you do, you know, that service. Donate your time, your energy, your talents, your passion. Donate everything you do. Pray for each other. Forgive often. Laugh. Have fun. 
Do your best in all you do, serving your God with joy in your heart, serving him in your being, which shows up in your doing, right? This is worshiping your God. This is your call to holiness, right? This is how you are living happy, joyful, and holy lives, so I want to make sure that you guys don't forget to take a chance to look at my website too. It's www.findinggodspeace.com. I have lots of eBooks, workbooks, online courses. Um, one of my favorites is God's fingerprints are all over our lives. Do you know he was always with you, guiding you? It's a great online course. I'd uh, ask you guys to look into that. Um, I have one for more on the more prayer scriptural side. It says, is your father really meant to help us in our daily living? Uh, another one is every day is a new beginning for he died for the forgiveness of sins. Learn to love yourself because we're so hard on ourselves. Those who hear my voice hear the truth. How is truth different from what appears to be true? Uh, faith transcends reason. This is my favorite. We are blessed with unexpected miracles every day of our lives. Um, I am loved in my humanness, my flaws and my sins and lack of faith and still am able to serve his purpose. That's another really good one, too. Um, so, again, I would encourage you guys to take a peek over that to my online courses. Some of my favorite ebooks that I have are my tra traditional or well-known um, Peace, Joy and You workbook. Uh, another one is Abundant Living, Five Things You Should Know. Moving forward from where you are, what's blocking you, and that's in so many areas. For people more interested in a family area, you've got family dynamics. We're all in this together. Um, one on gratitude, we've talked about that. I have one on happiness, holiness, and healthy living. One that's called We're Made to Be Holy. Holiness is not just for saints. Uh, another one on doing a daily examine. And another one about looking at challenges and opportunities. I have some teleseminars and some webinars in there too. So make sure you take time to look into that. It's been an honor talking about those three ages. It's meant for you. You're already doing a perfect job. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in God's plan for you. Do what's best for you so that it serves you so that you can have health, happiness, and holiness. Um, I pray for you all the time. I probably don't tell you that enough. I hope you pray for me. We're a faith community. Um, so until next time, when we meet again, uh, God be with you. Have health, happiness, and holiness. I'm your host, Gina. You're listening to Your Business with Faith, and we've been live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This has been Your Business with Faith with your host, Gina Sanasardo. Listen each week as Gina empowers you to tap into your God-given gifts, allowing you and your business to find inner peace and success on Gina Sanasardo's Your Business with Faith. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.